Yeah. Here, Tiki, you ready? This morning we have a fresh mm, mango. Mango. Yeah. Mm, yummy. Thank you. Good girl. Oh, that is delicious. Oh, yeah. Tiki loves mango. Mm hmm. Mm, Tiki you. loves mango. Nice puree. Is that good? Good girl. Yeah. It's breakfast time for everybody, huh? Surprised to see him enjoying solid food already. Hey. Yeah, they like the Yummy. Yeah. Yummy. He Yummy. likes the foods. <laughs> yeah. Tiki ready? Time to go upstairs? I'm ready. Okay, up we go. Up we go. Yeah, outside today, huh? Yes, good girl. Good girl. Up you go. Good girl, Tiki. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Yes, good morning. I already put some seeds in your dish for you, okay? Your breakfast is there. Have a good breakfast. Now, if you're wondering what I'm showing you and why, well, I think a lot of you are going to remember that for quite a while now, I've been testing, trying to find the best overall performance and noise in a small portable power station or generator for the sailboat. Now, we didn't want to go with a full, you know, extreme duty diesel generator because we don't plan to use it that often. We are fully solar powered after all, except when we have days and days of cloudy weather, in which case we need some kind of backup power. So in order to facilitate that, we just wanted something compact and portable that we can keep on the boat, that we can replenish the batteries as quickly as possible, as quietly as possible. Now, this one is by far the best one I've tested yet. If you guys remember, the first one we tested was a little tiny, it's about an 1800 watt portable generator, and it did a good job and it was very quiet, but it only put out about 15 to 1600 watts continuous, which meant if you need to put a bulk charge in the batteries, you're looking at five to six hours of operation. So not really viable unless you want to spend your whole day listening to a motor, which we don't. We went to the WEN 4000, that was that little orange one, the open frame generator. And that one did a better job because it could run at about 3,000, 3,200 watts continuous, but it was loud as, yeah, <laughs> it was loud. The same program I just showed you here, we tested it on here and I saved the program. It's, you can see, I don't know if you can read it there, but it says when four kilowatt generator and that thing was loud. It was like a tractor in the cockpit. And you can scroll down the information here. It says the average decibels was 89 decibels, okay? 89 decibels versus what you saw with this one, it averages around 78, 79. So that's a 10 dB decrease in noise level. For every three decibels you increase the sound, you double the sound pressure. So we went from 89 to 79, that is substantially less. This one is far less offensive in the cockpit, that is for sure. This one, we can still actually have a conversation in the cockpit. The other one, <laughs> no chance whatsoever. Now, basically I do all my tests exactly the same. I do them at two kilowatts, 
So I get the generator running at 2000 watts and I measure the sound pressure from 10 to 12 feet away, three to four meters, which is right here in the companionway. So when I stand here in the companionway, I'm exactly 10 feet away from the generator when it's running and I take the sound pressure measuring right here like this. Now, what if I told you that right now there is a two kilowatt generator running on this boat as we speak? Can you hear it? All I hear is the water splashing on the dinghy. What do you hear? This, my friends, this is what we call a next generation in backup power supplies for use on board or in your home. And this thing is pumping 2000 watts right now as we speak and I can't hear it. Do you hear it? You can't hear it because this one does not run on a combustion engine. It doesn't run on diesel fuel, it doesn't run on gasoline. Believe it or not, this one runs on the sun. And if you don't believe me, stick around, because today we're gonna learn something new. So today I'm going to introduce you to the term solar generator because that's exactly what this device is. And there is a new generation of products hitting the market over the last year or so that I know some of you have probably heard about and might be a little bit more familiar, but a lot of you have probably never heard of these devices. There are several different manufacturers producing these devices, all of different capacities, sizes, features, you know, to approach different markets. Now, I found what I believe to be the two top contenders in this area, and this would be one of them, the Bluetti. This is one of their devices, the AC200P, which is a two kilowatt inverter with a two kilowatt lithium storage system built in. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, well, lithium is bad. Well, in some cases, yes, it depends on the chemistry of the lithium. A lot of these solar generators are being produced with lithium ion batteries and that is going to be a lot less expensive, a lot less longevity and it does have a certain higher danger element because it's the lithium ion that has the tendency to basically explode or burn up if they exceed their operating temperature. And that can happen if you discharge too fast or charge too fast. Nowadays, that problem has almost been eliminated, but also by changing the chemistry, these systems are using the LIFEPO4 chemistry, which is lithium iron phosphate. That is a non-explosive compound. Now, all of these type of batteries have a BMS system built in, which is a battery management system, and it oversees all areas of charging, discharging, temperatures, shut off, you know, protection circuits, everything. So if any certain values are ever exceeded above what the manufacturer sets as their limit, the BMS just disconnects the battery and shuts it off until the problem has been corrected. Now, Bluetti in specific has a complete line of these products, smaller, medium, and larger. And this is one of the larger ones. This one is designed as part of a modular system, so you can add extra batteries if you want to increase the capacity of your system, if you're using it as more of a non-mobile system in your house for a backup system. Now, for me, in my type of application, this is one that I regard as one of the top contenders for the mobile environment. Not only because it's a little bit more compact, it's a mid-size range. I mean, some of them get a lot bigger and a lot heavier than this. This one weighs 60 pounds, which is manageable. It has two handles, so you can easily carry it around from place to place. And the entire casing and all of the outputs have been not waterproofed, but made water resistant through the use of all these rubber caps. So that's a big advantage also, especially in a marine environment. I've been testing this one for quite a while, probably almost three, four months now, and I've had it sitting outside almost all the time. So of course it has been rained on because I want to see, is it going to handle the environment? And so far it's done amazingly well, I have to tell you. Now, having said that, I want to stop right here before we go any further and remind you that this is not a paid commercial or advertisement or promotion of any kind. 
I am not paid in any way by this company. Bluetti simply contacted me, asked me if I wanted to receive one of their products, do some testing and review it in a video on the channel. I said yes, here it is. So on that, I want you to know this is completely unbiased. This is my opinions. They have not instructed me what I must say or have to say or should say or anything like that. I've done all of my own research. I've put together my own opinions based on my own experience. And I've been using these devices on the boat for almost four months continuous in a daily environment. So I'm very well familiar with how they operate, what their limitations are, what I like and don't like about them and the fact that I actually am very impressed. So spoiler alert, yeah, I do like these products and you're gonna find that out and why. Now, what is a solar generator? Well, when it comes to these devices, what you have is a compact, all-in-one, complete package system that can run anything you want with the battery storage and everything built in. To simplify, basically you have a system that combines the battery system, a power inverter, DC regulators, it has charge controllers for solar inputs, it has a battery regulator so that you can charge it from your AC wall outlet or a generator. It has everything built in to this one package right here. This one I should clarify, it has this bag that comes with it is an accessory bag. And the accessory bag has the actual charger for it if you're going to use it on an AC circuit. So this is your power supply for recharging it in your house if it depletes and you just want to charge it up fast. You can plug this right into your house circuit with that plug right there. This of course plugs into the back of the charger and then the charger just plugs into the Bluetti and it will output approximately 500 watts. Now this is a two kilowatt hour battery system which means that 500 watts should take approximately four hours to reach full charge from zero. Of course there's going to be a little bit of efficiency loss in there so you might be looking around four and a half to five hours maximum. You don't always need it so I guess that's why they made it separate if you don't need to take it with you camping or on the road in your RV or anything you can just leave it there and not have to carry it around. Now other things in the accessory bag are all of your cables and connectors for hooking it up to whatever you want to hook it up to. So they have 12 volt connectors. This you can use if you want to plug it right in here. It's got a cigarette lighter adapter built right there with a 10 amp maximum output. That's going to be perfect for all you guys that like to use those portable freezers, refrigerators, you know, Coolatrons and stuff like that. The average consumption on some of those little freezers, I mean, I used to use them also. It's about 80 watts when it's running. So 80 watts, you should be able to run for at least 20 to 22 hours if it's running continuous. But of course, those systems typically only run a 50% duty cycle, which means that you should be able to run two days without any charging one of the Coolatron systems. Not bad. The other wires that come with it, this is your charge adapter here. So this is for solar hookups. It's got the XTC connector there and an aviation plug, which is solid aluminum with a retractable case right there that locks into position very, very well. This is a very sturdy connector and it's going to last a long time. The wire is a good diameter. I'm very happy with that. This is the actual wire for charging from the solar panel. So this is the XT90 adapter. We'll connect right to here like so. And then they use these connectors with the MC4. And this is what's going to connect to your solar panels directly. So you can connect any amount of solar panels you want up to 150 volt maximum. So typically a series string of three or four panels will put you in around 100 to 120 volts and depending of course on the voltage of the panels but that you can plug in right here. Bluetti makes a series of panels specifically for this system that are foldable and portable and they sent me two of those which I've been using as well. So I'm going to show you those in a little while. The only thing I'd like to say at this point to Bluetti, this wire I think is a little bit... Uh, smaller than it should be for the amount of rated current. I mean, it's a 700 watt rated maximum input to the solar system, like the solar uh, charger controller inside the device. These wires might handle that, but I would still like to see them beefed up a little bit. Plus you can see, I've been using these outside for quite a while and you can see that that wire is already considerably faded from the original color. That means that it's not a UV stable wire. That immediately tells me that this casing is probably gonna break down at some point and start to crack, the wires will corrode, and then you're gonna have a problem. So not a big deal, even if you wanna make your own one of these, you can buy XT90 connectors just about anywhere, any hobby shop. Brendan and I used to use these when we were making the FPV drones. We had the XT60s, which are a little smaller, but same exact thing. 
MC4s you can get anywhere. You can buy them on Amazon. So you can make up your own cable. It's a little more sturdy than this, which I'd recommend, or it would be nice at least to see Blue ID provide something a little bit better. But having said that, like I said, I've been using it every day for four months. No issues so far, but I just have a feeling that, you know, eight months to a year, this is probably gonna create some issues at some point. So I will probably replace it, but I'll wait and see what Blue Whitey says, if they have a different option, a better replacement, a different upgrade, something. Now, as far as outputs on these devices, it has a full plethora of everything you could possibly need for life on the move. First of all, it's got six of these outlets here, which are your normal 110 volt or 120 volt, and they are programmable that you can switch them between 50 hertz or 60 hertz right inside the menus. The menu system is amazing on this. There are so many features you can control and information that you can extract from it to tell you exactly what the condition of the batteries are, the individual cells, what the inverter is doing, what the output of the inverter, temperatures, anything you want to find out is all in this menu system. And the display is all touchscreen, which is very, very nice. The only thing I will say about the touchscreen it looks okay in here, like you can read it in here no problem, but as soon as you take it outside, it becomes next to impossible to see. The, the, the contrast is just not high enough that you can actually read the letters in direct sunlight or even in indirect sunlight. If you have anything bright behind you, this is almost next to impossible to read. So I'm not sure why they did that. They could have changed, I mean, they have these low contrast letters you can see here where they've got a dark blue background and a light blue for the letters why they don't just go bright white on everything for the letters so it stands out better i have no idea but definitely the ones on this side where the menu are you can read those a lot better because everything is white now it's not a deal breaker it's just kind of a personal thing you know i wish it was a little bit better a little bit brighter so it was more usable outside it is advertised as a portable generator that could be used outside but seriously on this you put a blanket over your head or something you're not going to be able to read that display and tell what buttons you're pushing it's very very difficult next on our list of plugs we've got usb outputs so you can plug in any devices you want you've got four of these usb 5 volt plugs right here that you can plug in any accessories charge your phones anything you want you've got a usb c plug that's rated at 60 watts now these are three amps each so that's their maximum rating this is a 60 watt output so you could easily charge any of your usb c you know even power banks or anything like that directly from there if you wanted and it will be a relatively quick charge you've got a 12 volt direct output right here which is three amps so it's just going to need a couple of barrel connectors that fit in there for the positive and negative and you can use that to connect to any of your low power devices you're not going to want to run something very powerful if you got something more powerful you need to go to this outlet here this is also 12 volts and it's fully regulated i've tested these and they are stable at about 13.4 volts because the internal battery is actually 50 it's a 48 volt battery but its nominal voltage is about 53 volts so they have internal regulators for all of these outputs here. This one to five volts, these ones to 12 volts, and this one has a capacity of 25 amps. Now you do need to get a special adapter for this plug right here, but it is available on Blue Eddy's website. You can find it at the same time as you're ordering one of the systems. And that will allow you to plug it in directly if you want to power any of your ship systems that are 12 volts, or just plug it directly into your board if your battery's dead and you need to just get something running but you can plug anything you want into that up to 25 amps. That's a very powerful port right there. Now, over on the side of the unit down here. Okay, so right here you can see this is your solar input plug right there. And that is the one for this aviation plug right here. And it has the slip ring lock, locking system. Now it has a little red dot right there. You line up with the red dot on top here. Just couple them in, push it, and boom, it locks in place and it won't come out. It's a very secure, good connection. Over here, you've got your AC input. So this is the one that's for your AC charger. That's this plug right here. It would just plug right in there. And then when you plug this into your wall outlet, the AC charger will turn on automatically and start to recharge your batteries. So those are your two inputs. This one, of course, is regulated by the charger you plug into it, which is a maximum 500 watt charger. This one is regulated internally to 700 watts. So you can hook as many solar panels as you want up to this system via the MC4 connectors, and it will regulate it to 700 watts. So if you hook up even 800 watts of solar panels, that's not a problem, as long as you keep your voltage less than 150 volts. Over 150 volts, it just shuts down and you won't be able to charge anything. But that is one nice feature of the system. With these charge controllers, you can over panel the system. Um, you know, you're not gonna do that if you're just tenting or camping or you know, in a small van or something like that. But if you have extra solar panels available and you wanna put it up to 1000 watts or anything, 
you can and hook it up because and then when it's shady or early in the morning when you might normally only get say 200 watts out of your 400 or 600 watt system you can now get five or 600 watts out of a thousand watt system even in lower light so even if the panels are partially shaded or cloudy or anything like that you can still charge the system up much faster and it will regulate it all itself internally now one more charging accessory you guys are going to like i think anyway because i think it's cool we use it all the time just when we're in the cockpit is for your cell phones that have wireless charging capabilities there are two pads on the top here if you look right here you can see these two pads right here are 15 watt wireless charging pads so all you have to do is first just turn on your dc circuits dc output is off right now we switch that on okay you see it just powered up now we got lines going there now we take our cell phone and just lay it on the top and immediately you can see it's charging so there we go it's at 65 percent and charging very cool you can take it off and it stops charging put it on starts charging now about the inverter technology in this system this is a very advanced inverter it is pure sine wave okay so it is exactly what is recommended for all of your sensitive electronics you can run anything on it it runs a full two kilowatt output sustained depending on how much battery you've got will determine how long it will run the load it will run up to 4800 watts 4.8 kilowatts surge now that's not going to do it for minutes or anything but certainly a few seconds just in order to kickstart some of your electronics that might take uh, an extra boost to get them running power tools electric power tools or even your air conditioner or anything like that because this will actually run a portable air conditioner no problem at all Again, how long it will run it for depends on the setting of your air conditioner, the efficiency of the air conditioner, and how much battery is left before you start running the air conditioner. But we've run our air conditioner on it for several hours, no issue whatsoever. One of the advantage of having the LifePo 4 battery system in here is that it allows you to use virtually about 95% of the capacity of the battery bank. Unlike our standard lead acid batteries, you can only use 45 to 50% maximum, and that's even with just light loads. Because if you have a 100 amp lead acid battery and you put a 100 amp load on it, the voltage is just going to drop and your inverter is just going to shut down immediately because the voltage is too low and it can't handle it. With the LifePo 4, you don't get that voltage drop, so it can run heavy loads right up until the battery is almost dead and then. And that's when the voltage drops off at about 95%. And that's when your inverter will just shut down automatically or your battery BMS will kick in and disconnect the batteries to avoid damaging the cells. As I said before, a lot of the solar generators on the market that are actually substantially less money than something like this are using the lithium ion batteries. Now lithium ion will do the job almost as well, but of course they don't have nearly the lifespan. Lithium ion has a life cycle rating of about 800 cycles okay so you can charge and discharge it about 800 times if you're using that every day that gives you about a three maybe a four year lifespan maximum and that's before the battery's capacity will be effectively reduced to about 70 or 80 percent now with the lifepo 4 batteries you can actually cycle these things over 3,000 times minimum usually it's more like 3,500 to 4,000 but even at 3,000 times that's almost 10 years of daily cycling this thing is going to be around for a long time. I have a feeling the case is going to degrade and break down long before the battery system ever will. Now the thing we all want to see with one of these is what is its real world numbers look like. So that's the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to charge this up. Right now it's sitting at 98%. So I'm going to take it upstairs. We're going to plug it into some solar panels, charge it up just to top it up to 100%. And then we're going to do a full discharge test. I'm going to discharge it right down to, well, zero or whenever the system just shuts down. And we're going to measure how much much actual power we can extract from that two kilowatt hour lithium battery system that's inside for that we're going to use one of these devices here and this is a measuring device that we can plug into one of the outlets just like so and then we plug in our load now to do this test I usually use something that's around 1000 watts continuous and we'll just keep running and the reason being is that's a good enough load that it draws the battery down sufficiently fast enough we don't have to wait for like eight or ten hours for it to discharge and it's not a heavy enough load that it's going to cause a voltage drop and cause it to shut down too early so a thousand watt continuous load and for that our dinghy is perfect as you know we got the electric dinghy and its charger is 1000 watts so i'm going to plug that into here and we're going to measure it from 100 percent and see how much actual power we can pull from the battery system and then when it's dead we're going to do the exact opposite we're going to plug this 
into the boat system using the gauge again and measure how much power it takes from the boat to recharge this back up to 100%. And that'll give us an idea of how much actual capacity we have with respect to the efficiency losses in the inverters and charge controllers and such, okay? Because every time you have a charging circuit or put an inverter in, there's gonna be some losses. Most inverters have a loss of about eight to 10%, but well, that's what we wanna find out. How much power can we get out of the system and then how much power does it take to charge it back up? So that is next. Okay, on page two of our settings, you got your language setting. You can switch from English to Chinese should you want to do so. You have your buzzer sound. If you want to turn off the beeping, you can. And of course, just your time and date, which is all set accordingly. So we don't need to change any of that. We go back and out of the main menu. Now you can switch to data. And there's a ton of information in here. So first of all, just your product information tells you what firmware you're using, what software. You've got your AC charger info. So anything you want to tell, you know, it'll tell you what voltage it's operating at. Okay, so now I am going to plug in our charger into the AC input right here. And you can see right here, it's charging at 475 watts. So we are working. You can check the status of your battery charge adapter, which right now we have it plugged in. So it's outputting 54.7 volts at 4.7 amps. So 475 watts. Perfect. Okay, your DC output. We have 13.5 volts regulated output, but we don't have anything on charging right now. Let's see if I put my phone up on the top. You'll see the power right here just switched to four watts. So my battery's almost full anyway, so it's just topping it up at five watts output. Cool. AC output, same thing, 120 volts, 60 hertz. We're not putting out any power, nothing's plugged in right now, but we're gonna change that shortly. BMS maintenance, 53.9 volts. It's just telling you the status of everything here. And of course our fault history, but we haven't had any faults, so there's nothing for us to worry about here. So perfect, we go back. Now, if you want to see the status of any of your loads at that moment, you can just push on it and it'll tell you, okay, that is the 480 watts that we're charging with right now. This one, of course, we're not using, but it tells you the status of all the AC plugs. This one is your DC output at 13.5 volts. Everything's accessible right from the front panel, so you don't have to go searching through the settings for anything. Okay, so as you can see, we are at 100%. So, nothing further charging going in, so we will disconnect our power wire, close up the terminal. So we are ready for our first test. Okay, as you can see, we got our setup plugged in. The battery is at 100%. Charge cord is plugged in. Now we just need to take it and run it back to the dinghy. Okay, dinghy is plugged in. Now we just turn on our AC circuits. Display powers up, everything is at zero. And this should just start coming up in wattage as soon as it detects the battery charger for the dinghy. Okay, battery testing done. What do we got? 1.72 kilowatt hours. 
Okay, so we got 1.72 kilowatt hours out of it. Actually, that's not bad, I'm impressed. So that means a loss of about 15% from overall capacity, which you kind of expect that because the factory would normally reserve about a five to 10% safety margin with the BMS so that it won't just deplete down to zero. So we don't know exactly where that floor is, but it's probably between five and 10%. And then the rest of it is just inverter losses. So if we assume worst case at 10%, that means that we should be able to get 1.8 kilowatt hours out of it and we got 1.7. Not bad. I'm impressed. Okay, so now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to take the power brick and plug this into the boat so that the boat system, the boat battery system, is going to run this charger to recharge the Blue Eddy from 0% back up to 100. But this time we're going to plug this sensor into the boat system and again we're going to reset it so it's all zero zero and measure exactly how many kilowatt hours it's going to draw from the boat bank to recharge the blue eddy back up to 100. so we're going to do that next and then i'll come back to you okay so this guy's charging up now so we'll let him sit and that's going to take a few hours as i said because that charger only puts out about 500 watts so we've got at least a four hour wait for that to happen but meantime We've got these guys to deal with. And this is the new Blue Eddy foldable solar panels. These things are amazing. I gotta tell you. Now you guys know I love solar panels. I've done the best I can to put as many panels as possible on the boat in such a way as they don't interfere with our daily lives. They don't get underfoot. They don't interfere with sailing and their resistance to storms. Now a lot of these solar generator companies realize that their devices are for people on the go and as such have constructed these foldable solar panels. Now this is a 200 watt solar panel basically in the size of a briefcase. The whole thing weighs about 15 pounds, so it's not that heavy. It's easy to carry, and it's very easy to store them in a locker on a boat. We can put these just about anywhere. The whole panel unfolds four times, just like you see I've got one up on the bow here now. And this is a bigger one, but this is a 400 watt panel. And this one, you can see, they just fold up like so. And it just keeps folding up like an accordion until it's put away. So when you need the panel, you put it out on deck in a place that's exposed to the sun, but not in your way, which of course this is the perfect place for them. And you collect sun all day long and fill up your batteries. I mean, <laughs> it just gives you an extra bit of charge. It's especially helpful for keeping the batteries topped up when there's cloudy days, a lot of them, because the more solar you can put out, the more power you can collect in shady environments same thing what i've been doing with these panels is i've been putting them out on deck putting them in series hooking them up to the blue eddy and then i charge it up during the daytime and then at nighttime when the dinghy is in the lift i just plug the blue eddy into the dinghy and top it up so i dump all the power in the daytime into the dinghy in the morning before we put the dinghy in the water typically and during the daytime it recharges just sitting there it's beautiful <laughs> i mean it's a perfect application for us for this boat. The dinghy gets charged every day almost, and we don't affect the normal ship system at all. We don't, you know, use anything from the boat. We just charge up the Blue Eddy using the extra folding solar panels. Now, I'd love to go more in-depth into these panels, but they actually deserve a more in-depth review all on their own. So I'm going to save those for a particular video where we're going to test some of the other solar panels that I've been working with, because I've got quite a few that I've been working with, and some of them are really quite good. So I'm going to save that for next episode, but for now, we are going to wait for this guy to charge up and then we'll check the statistics on that and go from there. Okay, finally, we're at 100%. 100%. And it looks like it took 4 hours, 44 minutes and 2.4 kilowatt hours. So we got 1.72 kilowatt hours out of the battery and it took 2.40 to replace the same power in 4 hours and 44 minutes. Okay, so to summarize, we saw that it just took 2.4 kilowatt hours to replace the 1.72 kilowatt hours that we used. So figuring that out on a calculator, basically it shows up that we got about just around 72% round trip efficiency for charging cycle and discharge cycle. So the amount of energy we consume to replace it, we get about 72% of the amount of energy back. So we're losing about 14% each way. 
so it's reasonable. Maybe it could be better. I also know Blue Eddy has a new version of this available on the market now, so maybe that one is improved a little bit. I don't know, because I haven't tested that one. I'm only testing what they sent us. Having said that, this is the first one that we've tested, and there's going to be more, for sure. I already have other manufacturers that want us to look at their products also, and I'm very happy about that. I can't tell you how exciting it would be for me to be part of this newly developing technology, because five years ago, this kind of stuff didn't exist. I mean, even five years ago, lithium on a boat was almost virtually unheard of. Now it's becoming main place because the, the popularity is increasing, the prices are decreasing. Same thing is gonna happen here. But what is the price point? Well, this particular unit, the last time I checked, as of the writing of this video, it was for sale for about 16 to $1,700 US. Now, that's reasonable. There are less expensive models on the market, but like I said, they're using lithium ion technology, which of course is less expensive and much less longevity. If you want something that's gonna last a long time, definitely you look for the LifePo4, the lithium ferrous phosphate batteries. Those are the ones that are gonna give you pretty much at least a 10 year lifespan of daily usage and daily cycling. That's impressive. Now the solar panels that you can buy from Buetti that are part of the package if you wanna get a kit from them, the 200 watt panels, that's the ones that I have experience with and they work very, very well. I must say I'm very impressed with them. They deliver very close to the promised 200 watts and I'm not at high peak sun yet. I mean, we're still just in springtime where the sun is getting higher in the sky, but I have seen them put out close to their listed wattage. So I'm very impressed with that. I've been using two of them in series and that gives me 400 watts of charging. The recommended maximum is three of them in series and that will put you just under the maximum voltage limit for the unit and give you 600 watts of charging. So charging would be very fast. Now a plus is that if you're in a hurry to charge because you've discharged it for some reason and you want to take it somewhere, you can dual charge it. So you can plug it in with the house charger and get your 470 watts going in and you can also max out your solar charging at 700 watts at the same time. So if you're doing that, theoretically, you could be charging at between 11 and 1200 watts, which should charge the unit up in less than two hours. That's impressive, I must admit. Then you've got a two kilowatt hour battery storage system that you can take with you in your van, on the road, go camping, do whatever, on a boat. I mean, that is what I like about this system. It's targeted at a mobile environment, but if you want to keep it someplace in your house or something like that and use it as a backup power supply, you can also add batteries that stack up on top of it. Those are also available on the website, so if you check out the links I'll put in the description, you'll be able to check out all those different options that they have. Next question, would I buy one? For me, I mean, I have tested it enough to know that, let's just say that it would be at the top of my list, okay? I'm very familiar with what's available now, and I know what the ups and downs of most of the systems are and what the target audience is. For a marine-oriented environment or a mobile environment, I think that this unit is actually perfect and it's at a very, very reasonable price point. It's certainly more expensive than a regular generator. I mean, the, the generator that I showed you right at the beginning of the video, that generator is $900, but it runs on gas. So that means, of course, that we have lots of these hanging around, and those, cost money to refill every time they empty and they also take weight. One five gallon can of gas is almost 50 pounds. Two solar panels are less than 40 pounds and you never have to refill them. All you have to do is open them up in the sun and let them charge. That's an amazing development in technology in just the past few years that we have access to now at a reasonable price. Because you might think that $1,600 is a lot to buy one of these systems, but really when you think about how long you're going to have it and what it can do for you, you can run in pretty much any appliance in your house, you know, except a big dryer or something like that or a, a big air conditioner, but we're talking within reason. It's an emergency backup power supply system. It's not meant to run your whole house, okay? It's never gonna do that. If you want to build a big modular system up to 15 or 20 kilowatt hours with four or five or 6,000 watts of inverter service as well, you can do that by adding multiple units together. So you have option to do whatever you want, build it as big as you want or keep it as small as you want. That's the nice feature is that you can actually just custom tailor it to whatever you need. But yes, at the end of the day, I can say with good conscience that I can recommend this unit because I have tested it and I know what its capabilities are and what its limitations are. And I feel that it will suit you guys very well in any mobile environment. 
So that's my conclusion. Take it for what it's worth. I'm not certainly saying rush out and buy one, but if you're in the market for something like this, this is a very good contender that you should check out. As always, do your own due diligence, you know, do your own research, check out what's available. But I guarantee you, at some point, some of you will come back to this unit because it is actually a very good system at a very good price. Now, Blue Eddy has also done us the privilege that if any of you guys are interested, you can follow a link in our text description below. And they're also going to give me a code that I believe is gonna save you about $100 or something like that. But I'll find out exactly and I'll put the links in the description so it's there for you. Same thing with the solar panels. The solar panels are about $600 each, but again, they're a long-term investment. They're gonna give me a code, I think, for $50 discount on the solar panels, but I'll put the links and the discount codes for whatever I have in the text description below so you guys can track them at your leisure should you be so interested. And with that, I think I'll say farewell. Stay safe out there. Cheers, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now.